when most people arrive on our farm they think what the heck are these people doing because it looks like a jungle but there is method in our madness <laughs> Great grandfathers didn't plant one crop so eventually our goal was like well let's make this into a food forest so as of two years ago and for the next long foreseeable future our concept is we're going to be planting multiple crops and eventually wherever you walk must be something you can eat that's the concept of this farm and then I say another thing like farming especially first generation farmers like ourselves who are genuinely say we have no idea what we're doing and we google it but you say oh let me try something like put down this type of manure and compost wait and then you and then i tell people imagine it was a computer program you yeah. click file save yeah, wait, wait for a year and it goes ding and then it comes out the result and you're like ah oh, that didn't work <laughs> and then you adjust something again you click file save wait another year and you went yes that worked uh, wait was what, it this or was it this <laughs> you know and that's hard okay so poor pause from seedlings from seedlings from seedlings and i mean Obviously, these are more tropical fruits, yep. things that will normally grow in a more sort of maybe a low felt type conditions. Yes. High felt, not great with frost, etc. Is exactly. it the organic soil that's going to make them survive? I definitely think so. And, and weirdly, and people always ask us like, you know, surely you can't grow tropical here in Joburg. Joburg has a fantastic climate, actually. You know, I mean, if you look over Joburg, I mean, mm. look how green it is. Yeah. Um, so, yes, frost does hit them, but in a way our philosophy is but i don't know if we're right yet but you can grow anything in good soil that, like, do you think that's getting it past the point of establishment so it's i think so it's that first you know it's like uh, I, I say trees and nature is is like children you don't put a human baby out in the elements yeah it's hectic you know <laughs> but when they're little teenagers sure they can go outside you yeah, know and yeah, yeah, yeah. run around yeah. in, in the snow if you want you know yeah. so same with a little tree this is our dam where we pump all our borehole water into we have tilapia fish in here. Our goal is to be very lazy farmers. So we put up lights, which is not only pretty, but at the same time, what does lights attract? Insects. Bats. What do fish eat? Insects. <laughs> so they are fat and healthy. That's also the thing, the, the waste or the, what you would perceive as a problem in another system. Exactly. Is actually an input or a benefit in the system. I mean, what I say to people is, uh, it's the funniest thing to see people raking up their leaves putting it in the dustbin, going off to a nursery to buy compost and putting the compost on when leaves have a better manure, con manure content, like a, they are as healthy as manure yeah. and it, it, uh, it retains moisture, uh, keeps the soil warm, everything. Nature's yeah. doing it for you. Why do you need it? So you're, you're mimicking a forest in a way. That's, our, that's what we're trying to achieve and forests have been doing it for billions of years yeah. and we're just trying to copy it. Why do we it. think we could do it better? Just we let can't. it do it. <laughs> So we also plant clover as much as we can. Uh, what we love about clover is that everything we plant on the farm must have at least multiple uses. So clover is A, just from a beautiful thing. It looks nice and green. You can mow it like grass. It's not itchy when you're rolling it. It's edible. It grows a flower um, which attracts the bees and butterflies and it fixes the nitrogen in your soil. That's the key, the nitrogen. So this flower that we're growing over here is called the Black Heart Susie or Susan. Um, it's all edible, the whole vine and everything. Uh, generally what we do is say we pull it out of its sleeve, eat the purple part, which is where all the nectar is stored and it's delicious. The rest you can put in your salads, a G&T, and or just eat it as is. Most you know, it's importantly a G&T. Most important. That's what keeps the farm yeah. going, G&T. And then um, what, another benefit to this is it attracts all the ladybirds and what do ladybirds eat aphids so that's our aphid control so as much as we can plant and this was an ugly building and it's now look how beautiful this and it and it functional used, beautiful a, a functional beautiful plant exactly yeah. so it's just it's not that we we smarter than anyone it's just a case of what makes common sense so the question we ask ourselves is does it make sense to spray a very heavy chemical on the food you're about to eat Question number one, mm. it doesn't. Mm. Uh, question number two is, does nature know what it's doing? Yes, it does. Well, then question number three should be, let's follow nature. Food is, is medicine. And if we sort of accounted for the fact that um, 
it's not just in the production costs and the the literal apples for apples comparison is no longer an, a comparison because yeah. we're not measuring we're not measuring either the downstream costs which could be medical which yep. could be the medical bills so Definitely. the investment in good food is actually reducing your medical bill down the line so it shot. should be factored in mm -hmm. plus the remedial costs of fixing the environment that the other way of farming is is doing if that was factored in suddenly these apples are not even more so not comparable yeah um and that's all i have to say about that nice. i don't know what else i was gonna say this is our one walkway on the farm and we always say like to joe burgers you've got these massive walls or south africans you've got huge walls why don't you grow something up your wall either it's for your family or you can sell it you know sell it to neighbors or give it to neighbors and so for us this is our grenadilla wall it's two and a half years in the making and then to the other side of the wall quay is small citrus called a calamondin beautiful it's like a nachi type citrus that will now produce in winter mm -hmm. and uh, you eat it as is skin and all beautiful and then gooseberries in between that and avocado pear trees and that's just in our walkway you know so when we say diversity we really mean it and then in between that is now herbs growing like a rosemary you know so you could have 10 crops in one walkway amazing yeah. yes that diversity is insane if you taste lemon leaf it tastes like a lemon and then you we ask people you know some varieties of avocado what do you think it will taste like and many people are like ever um, but when you taste this particular ever leaf it has a licorice flavor to it no and it's incredible and he uses it in his can i take a piece yeah yeah he uses it in his mixology and different um you know different things that he uses oh it's wow incredible. like any cd yeah any seed and licorice no ways crazy or eh? forever or forever why doesn't it taste like ever i know oh. i don't know <laughs> don't have that answer. Uh, so people say you know organic farming why you know what does it mean even and some people say it's just an excuse to charge a lot of money <laughs> it's not the case so anyone can be organic farmers um all organic farming actually means is uh let's say farming without pesticide or farming naturally uh, and there are many other fancy words but so we are certified organic through EcoCert. Um, an outside company comes and inspects our farm. But anyone can grow organically. If you've got a meter by meter, a big thing, it doesn't matter. As long as you're just working with nature. And then for us as a farm, we're trying to go beyond organic. So um, organic just means no pesticides spraying. But we're going to say, well, what about the diversity? Uh, how do we get that carbon footprint down? How much... Uh, carbon are we pulling back into the soil none of that gets certified you know um for us that just makes sense you know wh why wouldn't we farm it any other way uh, before world war ii everyone farmed organically there yeah. was no such was thing as pest control farming, yeah. yeah exactly just called farm. uh, i mean right now we start off as a as a pomegranate farm but you know working with people like munching mongoose who are saying well we don't want to just only provide pomegranates to our clients that get bored and i would get bored to be honest so how do we take this farm and make it produce something that that we can supply a munching mongoose diverse crops that are still of a good quality you know so that um diversity of products includes um your know, processing of the of the um of the pomegranates into yes. gems so we've yes. got that as a product you're juicing yep. so you're adding value all the way up the chain you're not, you're all not the... just a farmer so like when you open a fruit the whole game changes right? exactly i mean and 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 consumers must be uh, happy in that in terms of they don't want knowing that we're cutting our fruit just out in the open and what if a disease comes in and stuff like that so obviously we need a high care facility whereas as soon as you open something you know we must be in a room con a temperature controlled room uh, you've got to obviously uh, abide by all the health and safety standards which is very important you know um, people you know you, you don't want to make anyone sick yeah. you know um, uh, but it's ironic you know the farm is you know people see this dirty and grimy and soily which we love and then suddenly you have to go into this pristine yeah, yeah. white facility you know? i think that juxtaposed that that um almost co seeming com contradiction is what's also fun about it right, right? right where it's like i can only imagine the other form of farming being hella boring yeah it's so you know so that, so clinical yeah so clinical yeah. um whereas you've got these these different elements and uh and and i i in a way i would actually how i would label you guys to a degree is playful thanks you know yeah. um yeah. and it is it's, it's taking all these elements i think the other thing that we haven't really spoken about is the fact that you're also creating experiences yes so you know the fact that people can get close to the food but in these really cool ways i yeah. mean you're foraging yeah. i love that yeah i think so that's we, so cool we host everything from uh, we take school kids around and then educate them on farming what does it mean they put on their hair nets and 
DC there in pomegranates all the way through to you know foraging for the drinking class which is teaching people about edible weeds and flowers to put in their GNT you know um, it's so diverse and then working with chefs you know that's an incredible experience mm. as well so um, but we're trying to be that farm we want to be accessible not a lot of people recognize the risk and investment you do up front oh. so you're planting something that's only going to give you a return what's it seven years after you planted well, yeah when is your first I mean we are in our 11th year and I can honestly say we're starting to break even on our pomegranates it's about a good symbiotic relationship between farm and a munching mongoose is that you can work with each other we don't want to get into the distribution and worry about boxes and things like that we want to concentrate on our farm and get the best quality crop welcome to Ganico <laughs> Thank you.